ourselves the frozen chosen, <laughs> my heart has been strangely warmed more than once by people like Margaret Burns. I'm going to share with you some insights from a passage of scripture taken from Matthew's Gospel. In the 13th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, you and I are provided with some fairly vivid images of how we might think about and imagine the kingdom of God and the life that you and I are invited to live therein. One of the word pictures has to do with the effort of a merchant, a certain merchant who is seeking to find pearls of great value. Jesus puts it this way. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Part of the significance of what Jesus is telling us has to do with being in pursuit of what you want. In those two verses, there is room, but not much, to draw some conclusions one such conclusion is that that merchant knew what was and what was not valid. She possessed a discerning eye. She, she knew the different grades of pearls, and she knew her craft well enough to be startled when the exceptional gem came her way. We can picture this merchant's eyes examining one pearl after another until holding in her hand, she realizes what it is indeed, that she is holding in her hand. With startled eyes and a glint of a smile beginning to dawn at the corners of her mouth, she, she comes to realize that she is holding a pearl of great, great value. The kingdom of God is what you and I want, is it not? The kingdom of God is what we are after, what we are hungering for, and it is where we want to live our lives all the time. And of course, the kingdom of God is not necessarily a place as it is relationships, as it is a state of mind, a, a condition of the heart, as it is a setting in which all is right and something tells us it don't get any better than this. How I feel for those who seem to be on an endless search, who never seem to find what they're looking for, those who, unlike that merchant, come up all too often empty-handed. Margaret Burns had a lot in common with that merchant, mind you. All through her life, and a life that by no means was characterized by a bed of roses, Margaret kept finding pearls of great value strewn throughout her life. She had a good eye, yes, a good sense of value, of course, and she was under no illusion for what she was looking for, and never was she willing to settle for some might call the second best. In returning Margaret unto the Lord, we do so with grateful hearts, and some of us are mindful that she leaves us her string of precious pearls. Mind you, the word that describes those pearls is the word beautiful, as in beauty is in the eye of the whole. And of course, Margaret was not the pearl we have in mind here. Rather, her string of pearls is you, her family, and you, her friends. When she beheld you in her eyes or in her arms, she recognized you as her pearls of extraordinary beauty and exceptional value. According to Margaret, you possessed a beauty none of you could have suspected, much less imagined. But in the eyes of Margaret Burns, you possess a beauty worthy of her attention, worthy of her care and her time, her worry, her sacrifice, and of course, worthy of her relentless love. From waiting on strangers and pennies to cooking up feasts and cooking up cakes, Margaret was telling you of your value, of the God-given value and beauty of your soul. And she sought to make it clear that, to her, you were worth a lot more than any of you, perhaps, will ever know. Maybe 
that was the reason why, when you were in Margaret's company, she treated you with such protective care and delight. And maybe there is more truth here than you dare to believe. But believe at least this much. In Margaret's eyes, you, you of all people, 